and we're live hello hey how are you i'm doing much better now how are you doing hey it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood it's a friday it's not raining so i'm happy i guess even here too it's uh really really cold outside but it's sunny so i'll take it <laughs> i always take sun over rain any day but just remember when it rains that means that gives opportunity for the plants and everything to grow sometimes we need rain I guess I like that. Great. I'm just going to give a minute or two for our friends to join. All right, I think we got a couple of people popping on. Awesome. If you're joining us live, do you want to drop a comment with your name and tell us where you're watching from today? Okay, amazing. Jill is joining us from Kentucky. Hi, Jill. How are you? Now we got a couple of uh, Sprout team members that are watching as well, so I'm sure they'll be popping on. I see Justin D. Hello, friend. I see Stuart from Nova Scotia. How's it going? Hey, everybody. Hey, Kim. Woohoo. Yeah. Melissa's joining us local too. She's just uh just down the highway over there in Burlington. That's awesome. All right. I'm ready to dive in if you are. All right, let's rock and roll. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Jules. I'm the Partnership and Outreach Coordinator here at Sprout. And today I am joined by the wonderful Shanika Roberts, who is joining us from Atlanta. If you've never met Shanika before, she is an expert when it comes to all things Sprout Studio. She is a personal branding photographer and she is most known for her vibrant photos and also her vibrant personality. Shanika is one of the fiercest minds that we are blessed to have in the Sprout Studio community. So I'm very excited for all of you to get to know and love her as much as we do. So that's why we're here today. We're going to talk to you, Shanika. You guys are going to get to know her a little bit better. And we're going to leave you with some tips and tricks to help you get your account set up the way you want it to be, minimizing the stress and anxiety, and give you some tips for success. Yay! That is awesome. You make me sound like I'm a I'm a really good person. That you did well on that, Jules. I appreciate it. I appreciate you right back. You make my job easy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so thank wanted... you for everyone who is tuning in today. Uh, you could have been anywhere today on this lovely Friday afternoon, but you decided to just tune in for your lunch break slash see what's going on on Beyonce's internet. <laughs> So I'm going to hand it back over to you, Jules. All right. So I kind of wanted to start off because I knew I was going to sing your praises because I am such a big fan of you as we all are here at Sprout HQ. But I wanted to share some kind words with you. I haven't even told Shnika that this is coming yet. So we're going to get a live reaction. Uh, I poked around, did a little digging, asked a few people that Shnika has worked with in the past because who better to say how wonderful and helpful you are than the people that you have helped and made life easier for. So I'm just gonna share some kind words from people that she has worked with and mentored before. So I was completely on edge and ready to throw in the towel, but really frustration was sinking and I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel after reviewing the Spurt School videos. Within one 60 minute Zoom call with Shan, today I got my stuff together. A weight was lifted off my shoulder and my clients made their deposits with ease. I love that the call didn't feel rushed and she was so patient with me and also gave me some to-dos and to focus on after the call. If you're struggling like me, just book with Shan so you can go back to making money. Some more kind words. 
anyone needs help with their Sprout Studio account, Shanika Roberts is the best. We just had the best call while I was in Bali at midnight. She was in Atlanta and my sister was, my assistant, sorry, was in Tampa. Just so good. And oh, I got two more actually. She's very creative and professional. And the biggest plus is that she has such a warm spirit and personality. When they say patience is a virtue, Shanika rises to the occasion. Shika is a phenomenal photographer and mentor. She's very talented and knowledgeable in photography. Her professionalism is always up to par. She's always welcoming. Her passion for photography is very inspiring and she continues to help me on my journey as a photographer. She has an eye for detail and such a wonderful personality. I would recommend her to anyone I know. Who's cutting onions? <laughs> Not me, just the truth. Aw, thank you. You are so very welcome. I thought that would bring a little more sunshine to your day as well, but the people have spoken. Shanika, how long have you been using Sprout, actually? Well, it all started in the fall of 2020. We were all in the pandemic, and I got tired of doing everything manually. Sent an invoice here, create a contract there, sent a link to a gallery here, and I came across Sprout Studio. So I said, oh, wow, they have everything in one central location. So I'm not sending my clients all of these different links to these different platforms. Everything is housed in one um, online platform. So I said, okay, let me give it a try. And uh, it was in October. I said, okay, I have until December to figure this thing out because, you know, January, everybody's new year, new me. They want to rock and roll. And I want to have this CRM up and running to its full capacity. So it took me about two months to figure it out, go through all of the YouTube videos and to really bring everything together as far as my client experience and the booking pages and all of the wonderful things that Sprout Studio offers. And I was able to successfully launch in Q1 of 2021 um, Sprout Studio where I was able to track all of my income for the year, have all of my galleries in one place all of the invoices is in one place. And it's, it's just, it's, it's been a breath of fresh air for me. So I, I love Sprout Studio. Oh, that's awesome. That's what we love to hear. And I know it's been a few years now that you've been with us, but what can you remember about that first one to two months when you were just getting started, kind of just digging your heels in? What, what memories does that bring up? What feelings does that bring up? Uh, overwhelmed. I was uh, I had a lot of anxiety because I knew that the program did a lot, but it was a lot of information all at once. So how do you eat an elephant a bite at a time? So I, I went through the, the setting up step by step. So there is a, what's called the startup wizard. The startup wizard makes sure that you're doing everything properly as far as putting your name in, your address, setting up your merchant payment processing with Square Stripe or PayPal, choosing your, your colors for your theme, um, choosing your form type. So I knew at least I can get paid above all. And then I know just from the past, when someone books me, I know I need to have some type of pricing list, some type of booking proposal, so or some type of contract. So I was, I was pretty much putting things step by step together um, to help me piece together what my client experience would be. Whereas uh, that's where I created the PDF. I'm kind of jumping ahead, but I created the getting started PDF because I knew if, if I was experiencing the same thing as a new Sprout Studio user, there were other people who were trying to piece together the dots. So I was able to create that PDF so that people are able to go and look at it, follow it step by step. And at the end of the, of the PDF, they're able to have a contract, have a booking proposal, have a price list all in there where everything else you can just customize it and make it beautiful on your end. No, exactly. And you've done such a beautiful job with the PDF. Let's just dive into it. Um, okay. You've made it so easy. It's just so visually appealing too for people to just kind of map out exactly this is where I need to start. This is where I need to end up. And mm -hmm. If you're anything like me, sometimes when you get those like startup questions in the beginning of any software, regardless of what it is, you're like, oh, I don't want to do this right now. You skip ahead. But mm -hmm. it's so important that you mention that because it's 
there for a reason. It's there at the beginning for a reason so that all the pieces start to fit together right from the start because it's a lot right. easier to start with a good foundation than to try and skip ahead 10 steps and then work backwards sometimes. So exactly like you said, then you're trying to build a workflow and you're like, wait, I don't have my payment processor set up or I don't have uh, all the little things that kind of add up before you get there. So I think it's you've created such a simplified and visually appealing way for someone to just say, okay, this is where I'm starting and this is where I need to go. So we are going to get anyone who wants to get your PDF to send Shan a DM on Instagram and she's going to send it your way. Right. Um, so you would say you drew inspiration for creating this PDF from your own journey, like right when you started out, putting yourself back in baby sprouter shoes of this is what helped me. Absolutely. Because a lot of times when people get started and I'm, I'm speaking for myself, even with a camera, if I go and buy a new camera, I'm not going to read the instruction manual. I am going to go in and play with the settings or play with, if it's a new software, play with the software versus this is the order of operation. And if I need to do A, B, C to get to X, Y, Z, don't let me go and create an invoice if I can't even get paid and I don't have my merchant processing payment system set up. So it's one of those things where when you set up order and you're doing everything in order, then it's a lot easier on the back end versus, why well, I sent an invoice and the person said they couldn't pay. Well, they may not have the opportunity to pay because you don't have your payment processing system in place for them to pay. So the, the biggest thing is, of course, Sprout Studio wants to keep you booked, wants to keep you busy. But most importantly, Sprout Studio want to make sure that as, as photographers, we are productive and we're not doing things manually that we don't have to where there's automation. Exactly. Automation is your friend and Sprout definitely makes that easy for you to do, but you got to know where to start. And exactly like you said, it's the order of operations and just kind of giving people some clarity or streamlining that process a little bit more for them. Um, can you walk me through what your approach is when you're taking someone to, under your wing to mentor them and help them get set up in their Sprout account? What does that process look like? Yeah, sure. So typically I would show them everything that they can do within like a five minute period because there are so many different things that you can do with Sprout besides setting up a booking page or a booking proposal or, hey, I need this for many sessions. You can also use Sprout Studio for email marketing to send out monthly or weekly newsletters to your clients. You have uh, workflows that you can set in place where there's automation for your client, whether it's they are a lead or whether it's a shoot or a post shoot workflow. So a lot of a lot of people may even may not even know what a workflow is, because again, we're in we're in the hustle and bustle of doing everything manually, where again. It may take some time to set up in the initial beginning with your Sprout Studio, but the time it takes for you to set everything up is going to, at the end, save you on the back end where you're not having to let me go and reply to a lead or let me go and reply in a DM. No, if someone sends me a DM, I'm going to send them my contact page that has my Sprout Studio contact form embedded on it. So um, it's all about showing someone everything that they can do and the possibility of Sprout Studio. In addition to that, showing them the how. Okay, I showed you this is what you can do. A client can have their portal where they have all of their shoots in their portal, or if they have multiple shoots, they have multiple shoots where they can go and retrieve their gallery if they need to. In addition to that, let me show you how you can create a client. Let's go and create a, a test client in your CRM so that you can understand how the system works so that you can see what the client gets on their end. So if a client says, hey, I just got an email. Well, yeah, I know what email you got because I BTC myself on all the emails. So something as simple as that, you don't know what you know. And that's what I'm here to help fill the gap. Um, just to kind of show you a shortcut or you may not have the time to sit and look at Sprout School or look at all the YouTube videos because it may take hours, it may take days, or you may be distracted or I just need one, one thing to, to troubleshoot. I got everything else, but I can't figure this thing out. So, okay, well, have you done this? Have you done, no, I didn't think about that. Well, my workflow is not triggering. Well, have you triggered it to a default um, shoot type? 
based upon your contact form. So simple things like that will take you a long way. Or if, if you need the hand holding up, hey, I just need to, I need help this, to get this together. And let's, can we just walk step by step? What do I need to do? And we would like, I've had someone on a 60 minute call, um, sign up with their, their square. They also was able to create a price list, create a booking page so they can send a booking page is basically a link that you send to a potential client that has your availability. They see your schedule and your offerings and they're able to go and book on their own without talking to you. So the, so the person was able to create the booking page and her homework was to start her workflows. She didn't have any of that set up because it was so overwhelming. It was a, a journey that we went on to show her, hey, these are all the things that you can do. Fret not, do not worry. That's what I'm here for, to make your life easier and simpler. But well, we're gonna do it on a, a more accelerated pace, but I'm gonna be holding your hand along the way. Yeah, and that's, I think sometimes what we all need is just that extra little guidance or that extra little hand holding exactly. And I love what you said about um, creating the like fake client or testing your workflows with a fake client. Cause I think that's such a good tip because I think uh, it can be definitely overwhelming and intimidating to try and set up a workflow for the first time and to try and set it live too and worry about when it's going out and if something goes wrong. So I think that's a really good piece of advice for anyone who's feeling a little apprehensive about setting up a workflow to start is create a test client, create, put some test data in there and test it out a bunch of times yourself because it is a learning curve. Practice makes perfect though. And when you need that extra helping hand, we have our lovely Shan, we have support, we have Sprout School. If you want to spend a lot of time with Brian too, that's what it's there for. Yes, I was, I was telling Jules the other day, I feel like Brian is, he's like my BFF because I would sit and I would talk to him, but he wouldn't talk back to me. We would talk only when I press play in Sprout School. So <laughs> I spent a lot of time with Brian um, when I was setting up my account just to understand the ins and outs of Sprout Studio. Spend a lot of quality time with Brian. I love it. <laughs> um, what would you say are some of the most frequently asked questions that you get when you're helping photographers get their accounts set up? Well, first and foremost, how do I get paid? <laughs> Where do I go to to get paid? I want to make sure that everything is testing. If I if I need to create a fake invoice, I want to make I want to see what the client sees when they go to pay. So I will have them set up a, a fake client and create an invoice, and they will be able to see what the um, client will see on their end. One of the other things is, well, how do you get everything in the portal, and how do you access the portal? So that's as simple as clicking on the contact, clicking the three dots that's on the far right and view client portal. So you can view all of your client's portals right there and see what they see on their end. Um, what happens if I have a reoccurring client that books multiple sessions throughout the year? Do I have to add them as a lead? Yes, you have to add them as a lead, but you add them as an uncategorized shoot type because that is the only shoot type that I have that does not trigger a lead workflow. Any other shoot type, so when, uh, if I say I have a portrait session or if I say I have a graduation session or a headshot session, any of those leads would trigger a lead shoot workflow, a lead workflow. So basically, if Jules had her birthday session with me in March and then she comes back in August saying, hey, I wanna have a graduation party a graduation party for my cousin can you can i book you well i'm not going to go and create jewels as another contact i'm going to go and pull up her contact information and a lot of things a lot of times photographers they go and they add the current existing client back into sprout as if they were a new client when i always encourage them to go back to that same client and create a booking proposal from that so some, those are some of the different things where people have duplicate clients. And I, you can use the wizard where the, the wizard will merge the client information based upon which one you tell it. So if there's two clients, two, two of the same clients in Sprout Studio, you can merge it where all of the client's previous shoots is versus the duplicate that you don't want to use the contact, the information for. 
So those are just some of the few things of many that people ask is pretty popular. Yeah, that sounds like it's a lot of like the little nuances that you almost don't think of sometimes until they come up or then Mm -hmm. they do come up and you have that moment of panic of like, oh no, I don't know what to do. And just further proof of why it's awesome to work with someone like you that can answer those questions proactively, probably even before someone thinks of them of like, hey, I've been here, I've seen this happen before, this is how you prevent this from happening, or this is a faster way for you to accomplish your goal instead of you puttering around for days or weeks trying to figure it out on your own. So it's such a good resource to have, just someone who has been in those shoes before, who knows what it's like and is willing to share their knowledge and experience to just help you streamline that process and make it a lot quicker and a lot less stressful for you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, how much time does it typically take you when you're working with someone to help them get their account set up? I know it probably depends on a couple different factors, you know, like how much, how long they've been a photographer, how much data they have going on, but just like a general idea, like how long could someone expect before they're up and ready to go? Well, it depends on a few things. One, have they, or have they set up anything in their account? So I have some people who I've worked with in the past where they already have their price list. They already have their merchant processing and they're trying to put together the pieces as far as, well, what's the difference between a a booking page and a booking proposal? They look like the same thing to me, right? Uh, Which they are essentially. One is just uh, a link that you can send to someone, which is a booking page without them going in and uh, inquiring about your services versus a booking proposal is, they are a lead, then you then you then send them a proposal based upon the conversation of the services that they want that you offer. Um, so it, it really depends. It may be one session, it may be two sessions, um, but typically a lot of the questions that I get, um, I've had people book one or two sessions and they're happy. Then I have some people that starts from scratch where they're trying to merge all of their information over from one previous CRM that has been, you know, something that's reoccurring where it's a lot of information and they want to make sure that everything is is working right, all of their price lists and, and guides is correct. So uh, that one client I've been working with since last year, March, but we're not meeting every month. We're meeting like every other month because she's doing things on her own as well. So it's, it's pretty much ad hoc as needed. Yeah, but it's awesome, I think, that you work with I think you definitely have a specialty and a soft spot for people who are kind of just getting started out, but it's been really cool to see kind of the growth too of, I think there are people who could have been using the software for years and will probably still be able to pick up some tips and tricks from you because exactly like we said, it's just the perspective, it's different ways of approaching it. And I think you just have such a natural knack for kind of just connecting those dots really quickly and seeing, hmm, how can I approach this in five different ways and what's the quickest way to get there. Mm -hmm. And one other thing that I do when I, as soon as I get on the Zoom call with someone, I ask them, you know, what is their problem? And then I determine what is the solution? How can we solve that problem? And then right after that, I ask, well, did you have any other questions? Most of the time people say no. And then I would say, well, did you know that Sprout can do that? They're like, whoa, wait a minute. I didn't even think about this. So it gives them opportunity to venture off into other things that the software can do, possibly that they would have never thought about before if they didn't have just a conversation with me. So I eat the email marketing. It's super huge. You all have tons and tons of templates in there, but people don't use the template. And one of the things we have, we have to always remember, our customers, have we have to make them think about us as the first person if they need photography needs or if they have someone that needs our services. You also have to think about there's graduation season, it's spring, it's getting warm, everyone's going to want to take photos. So you constantly want people to be on your mind, i.e. at least send people an email once a month versus when you have an offering where you want them to have a mini session or you want them to book. Have them send information that is valuable. So for example, one email that I sent last year was Five, five tips to rock your, um, your, your family session. And it's just tips. One, two, three, four, five. Or um, five things to do for you in 2022. And I told five personal things that helped me in 21 that I just reflected on 
a nice little word, blurb. I didn't have any call to actions. I just wanted to provide information because I'm not always asking for a sale every time I send a newsletter. Sometimes I, I leave I, at the end of the newsletter, I ask an open-ended question to see if someone is going to respond. So you have to always make things relatable for your um, your client, even with the then and now challenge. I sent a picture of me when I was a baby versus a picture of me now. And the story that I told was a lot of children nowadays are not going to have those photos because people do not print their photos. So if people do not print their photos and something happens to mom's phone or Facebook no longer exists, how would the kids be able to retrieve those photos? They won't. That's so, that's so true. And I never, I never thought about it in that way. Like I think about how many baby photos I have, like hard copies, but then compared mm -hmm. to like oh, yeah. my friends who have kids now or my nieces. And I'm like, I don't think I have more than a handful of like physical printed photos. So that's a really, really good tip there. Mm -hmm. That's a newsletter all by itself. Yeah. Smart. Mm -hmm. Aside from uh, some of the email marketing features, what are some other hidden gems in Sprout that you think a new user would easily overlook or wouldn't think is as important as something like email marketing? One big one is the schedule. I mean, not the scheduler, but the assistant. So for everybody who does not know, the assistant does everything else that is not included in a workflow. So you have two types of workflows. One is a lead workflow. So that is a series of emails that you send to your client before they sign the contract and pay. Then you have what's called a shoot workflow. So the shoot workflow is a series of emails that is sent to your client after they have signed the, signed the contract and paid the deposit for your invoice. Well, the scheduler is a ton of emails that is attached to the client. So, for example, if they have a session, you can determine how many days, how many emails they get prior to the session as a reminder. Three days before the session, five days before the session. If they have an invoice and you already received their deposit, you can make it where seven days before the invoice is due, they get an email reminder, five days, three days, two weeks, it doesn't matter. So the scheduler does everything else as far as, hey, you sent them a gallery, but they never opened it. Oh, here's your gallery, you never opened it. Or here's your gallery, you never submitted your favorites. Or if you're doing the virtual IPS, here's, here's the things that are in your cart that you left because you, you were not able to, um, you didn't complete the purchase. So the scheduler, I mean, the assistant is something that you don't know even exists because you're, you know, when you first get in there and started, you're thinking about, okay, I got this workflow. I need to do this. I need to do that. The assistant does everything else. Um, one other thing is the scheduler. The scheduler is connected to your calendar. So whatever you set your availability for, let's say you only shoot part time and it's on the weekends, your scheduler is, hey, every Saturday and Sunday, I'm available from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. for sessions. Or I'm only available on Saturdays or I'm only available on Sundays. So if a client went to go and book a session with your booking page, which is that link that they can go and book by themselves, they see what availability you have. Saves so much back and forth. That's awesome. I know even like I've booked uh, some meetings with some of our ambassadors before and I love when they send me a spurt schedule. I'm like, it's so beautiful. It's so it's just nice to see it out in the wild. So I can imagine how many headaches that would save you as a photographer trying to interact with your clients and get everyone booked in and doing the back and forth of what about Tuesday at this time or what about Friday at this time. So it saves a lot of back and forth. I think same, like you said, with the Spirit Assistant that just takes some of the guesswork out of it for you and the follow-ups, the reminders, the things that you would have to manually remind yourself or leave yourself a hundred sticky notes on your monitor to remember just does it for you. So it's all about making life easier. Yeah, I like the dashboard too, because the dashboard gives you a weak glance of whatever task you have that's upcoming or any invoices or shoots or whatever's on your calendar or whatever's in the, the um, assistant, that's what the dashboard tells you. So that's pretty cool. What do you think, in your opinion, if you had to pick one, what do you think is Sprout's most underrated feature? So the feature that is fantastic, but doesn't get nearly enough credit. Hmm. 
for me, I would say the reports. Only reason why I say the reports is because outside of the money, if you're looking say, hey, I want to make 5K, 10K a month, whatever the whatever your goal is, people don't look past that data. So if you scroll down, it tells you how many inquiries you had, how many leads you had that month. The reports also tell you what your booking rate is. The reports always also breaks down, well, how many shoot types you have what type of shoots you're you're making your the most money at. So you can look at a glance. Okay, well, I thought I wanted to do newborn photography. And I'm speaking for myself because that was something that I, I wanted to do. I looked at a report. Newborn photography did not generate any income. So for me, if it's not making me no money, that's not a service offering that I need to continue on to say I want to offer. So it gives you opportunity to see where you are making your money with what shoot types is being segmented. And then you can see, all right, well, this is not really working. Let me go back to the drawing board to see where I can make, where I'm making the most money and where I need to advertise to continue on that growth within my business. Saves you a lot of accounting and admin time, I'm sure, because otherwise you'd be probably pulling your hair out trying to do that manually and say, okay, what What's making me the most money or where can I save money? And You know what I did before? I had spreadsheets. <laughs> spreadsheets galore and formulas. Uh, not a spreadsheet fan myself. I'm, uh, yeah, done for me, definitely. I'm uh, not a mathematician and I don't think many of our photographer friends are either. So, yeah, if there's an easier option when it comes to accounting, always take it. Oh, yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you before I hop back into the comments and see if we have any questions for you. What would be the biggest piece of advice you could give someone who is in their trial right now and is feeling overwhelmed and wants to throw in the towel? What would you say to them? Make a list. Make a list of everything that you want to achieve and then set deadlines for yourself. If you don't have a clear understanding, of course, you know, the trial may be for a certain amount of time. And then what? If you don't use the trial within that time, are you going to go and use another email account? And say, oh, okay, I'm just going to start all over. No. Set a deadline. All right, I know I have three days left in my trial. Within these three days, I'm going to do A, B, C, X, Y, Z. So if you set a list and you set realistic goals, that's how you're going to be able to measure that success. You have to sit down and do the work. That's one thing about being an entrepreneur. You can outsource all day. You can, you can, you can have, you, even if you're not a photographer, you have other photographers that are shooting your weddings. That's fine. But when it comes to the CRM and the business of photography, you have to sit down and do the work. Because while you can, you can hire Sprout to set up or you can hire Sprout to, to migrate all your information over, but if you don't know how to do it, if you don't know how to use the operating system, it doesn't make any sense. If you don't know how to send an invoice or send a booking proposal or doing everything piecemealing, unfortunately, you're not doing your due diligence to yourself and you're not, you're not doing the due diligence for your business. So you have to sit down, you have to nurture, you have to take the time. When I, was, when I started Sprout, I said, all right, every night I'm going to spend at least 30 minutes on Sprout. And within those 30 minutes, I had, all right, this week I'm working on all of my workflows. Next week I'm working on, I'm looking at all the contracts. Next week I'm looking at all of these emails. I'm going to change the email so it sounds like me. I'm going to give it some personality. I'm going to change out so that it's pretty. Like, you have to be that detailed because there's so many different things that is in Sprout. If you don't, someone's going to say, oh, I got this email from you and it said that the session fee is $200. Uh-uh, where do you get that from? In the email you just sent me. Well, if you didn't read the email, how can you say you didn't send it? So sit still, do the work, take the time, and drink a big cup of patience. <laughs> That's such good advice just all around, too, is make a list, sit down, breathe it out, and push through. Well said. Uh, I'm just going to pop back over to the comments while we have a bit of time left. If anyone has any questions for Shan, anything that they're stuck on right now without getting too much in the weeds of like account specific, but just if you want some advice on 
how should I do this? Or Shan, what do you think is the best way to do this? Or how would you do this? Pop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer as many as we can. Oh, Lejeune's here too. Hi, friend. Hey, Lejeune. Oh, we got Dr. T here. Hello. Hey, You're Dr. T. Everybody's coming through to say hello. Yes, we love to see. Did you have any other questions or any other feedback? Uh, I had one question, but I just realized I already asked it to you. I was going to ask uh, advice for baby sprouters getting started. Ooh. Sorry, the power just went out, apparently. Ah, uh, okay. A little flicker. <laughs> I think we're good, though. Well, yeah, your internet is still connected, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just getting so many nice words. What, what have you heard from uh, the Sprout team as one of the, one of the hardest things for new users for setting up? What is some of the feedback that you all have heard? I think anecdotally, it's similar to what you said is just the, I don't know where to start or almost like the like mountain out of a molehill type thing where it just seems super overwhelming and like not discounting. It is a tough job to learn, not even just for any new software, doing anything for the first time, of course. No one's for the most part naturally just really good at setting up systems and operations or learning software and if you are fantastic love that for you but for the most part I think people would look at that and be like very overwhelmed and scary um that's what I hear most often from our friends and support is just the I don't know where to start or I think like we were saying earlier just trying to get too far ahead like they skip through the startup wizard because they're like oh I'll come back to that later and kind of realize if you don't make time to do it or later never really comes, so then you're struggling to understand, well, this isn't firing the way it's supposed to. And then I think that just leads to more frustration further down the line because you've watched all the videos or you've done all the things, but it's still not clicking sometimes. And I think sometimes it just comes down to the type of learner that you are and knowing just personally how you learn because some people do learn just from, they can read a help doc and okay, got it, that answered my question. Some people need to watch videos or they need to do the kind of two screens side by side where you watch someone do it and then you do it yourself. Um, sometimes you do need the hand holding. That's more how I learn is like, show me how to do it and then I'm gonna repeat it a bunch of times and eventually I'll figure it out. So I think if I have any advice for baby sprouters is uh, don't be afraid of the support team. They're your friends, they're there to help you. So don't be afraid to ask for help and it is overwhelming, but it's probably not as overwhelming as you think it is. It always, I think, feels worse in your head. Makes sense. Um, I have a question from Millicent. They're asking, back to the assigning multiple shoots to one client, after adding shoots as uncategorized, do you later change the shoot type once they're booked? So after I put in their information, so I create the message lead, they are uncategorized, I send them over a booking proposal. So in the booking proposal page, that's when I change the shoot type because that information is one, gonna be in your contract, it's also gonna be in your welcome message in the um, booking proposal, so yes. That's just, when you create, when you have them as an uncategorized lead, that just helps to bypass the workflow. Otherwise, they're gonna be triggered a workflow. All right, friends, we got about five, five-ish minutes. If anyone has any other questions they want to pop in. Now we've got our support team who's hanging around in the chats too. So if anyone has questions. Lejeune said, Sprout is about being intentional with detail. Yes, heck yes.
Carly just says she loves your shirt, Shannon. I do too. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's, it's just my company, you know. <laughs> I love it. We love branding. Yes, yes, yes. So, Jules, I have another question for you. Ooh, have you okay. gone into Sprout as a Sprout user and gone through creating everything <laughs> as far as a booking proposal, a lead, a workflow, sending so, someone something? <laughs> so when we when I started, uh, that was one of the things that we were tasked to do like within the first probably week or two was to go through that process of setting up an account, kind of go through your free trial, uh, do all the Sprout School videos and treat it like exactly like how our users go through and definitely remember that feeling of just like, this is overwhelming, this is a lot. So I can empathize on the, I've done it from right when I started, when I knew very little about the software and still having the perspective now where I'm no Sprout wizard by any means, that's, uh, that's all our friends and support, but mm -hmm. I can definitely understand where the overwhelm comes from because it is a powerful software and I think about it the analogy we use a lot of the time is like um, the first time you opened up Adobe like you know it's so robust it can do so many things but you're not going to master Lightroom the first time you open it up or the first time you try it it takes so much practice it takes time to kind of figure out your rhythm figure out what works and I think Sprout is very similar in that regard it takes a lot of time to just kind of get comfortable with get your bearings but then once you do years later you're going to look back and be like wow why was i so overwhelmed or why did i wait so long so just uh practice makes perfect and yeah i've spent a little bit more time poking around in the software more recently and i almost want to retake sprout school just because then i think i'll have a even different perspective looking back at it again poking back in the comments, but they don't want to load for me for some reason. Someone said, where do I sign up? I live to share. That's Facebook <laughs> user. I don't know who it is. I just see Facebook user. <laughs> You're going to be getting some DMs today, which actually on that note again, if you would like Shan's beautiful PDF that we were talking about, Go over to her Instagram, send her a DM, and we'll send you a copy of her PDF because it's beautiful. It's just visually organized. It's going to help you navigate your getting started in eight quick steps. And if a member of the team would be so awesome to drop Shan's Instagram link, very much appreciates it. Oh, uh, Stuart is the Facebook user. Awesome. Someone just popped your Instagram and your Facebook there. Amazing. All right. I think that is our time. Yes. Already? I know. Oh. It's always a happy day when I get to talk to you, and I'm sad when it gets to end, but the last couple weeks we got to talk to you a lot, so I'm very happy about it. <laughs> I'm just an email away. Always. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Shan, thank you for being here for everything you do for the community, for just being the ray of sunshine that you are, for spreading so much joy and just being awesome. We love you so, so, so much. And again, anyone who wants to get to know Shan, wants her PDF, wants a hand getting your account set up, wants to get some advice on how you can tweak things, make things better, send her a DM on Instagram. It's at Shan Roberts Photo. And it's Thank dropping you, All Hope right. you're able learn something today if not i just sprinkle some sunshine your way <laughs> <laughs> your specialty yes all right everyone have a happy friday and take care and we'll talk to you soon bye, bye.